Hello everybody, JT Bear here. Welcome into my little aquaponic greenhouse. I thought today we'd do something useful and actually talk about, well, some of the reasons that you should start gardening right now. If you don't already have a garden, well, you really, really should. And it's, you know, beyond all the, it's great to get outside and it's lots of exercise and it's fun. Let's talk about some of the, the real reasons that you should start gardening, all right? Reason number one that you should start gardening right now. It's cheap. In this day and age, almost anything that you're going to do to find some sort of pleasure or enjoyment in life is going to cost you money. It's not going to cost you just a little bit of money either. It's usually going to cost you a lot of money. Like, it's, it's really stupid, the value proposition that goes on with entertainment in the world today. But really... A gardener need never be bored. There's always weeds to pull, seeds to plant, things to prune, something to harvest. Like There's a million things to do. So it's a very cheap hobby. And really, when you get right down to it, it's got to be the cheapest, most productive hobby on the entire planet, okay? Most dollar stores, at least, at least most dollar stores where I live, carry seeds in the spring and usually through the summer because they're trying to deal with their inventory. And you can get three or four packages of seeds for a dollar, okay? Let me show you some of the ones here I've got from my dollar store. Now this is uh, from visiting two or three different dollar stores because I like to have a selection, right? But carrots, wildflowers to bring the bees in, right? Cilantro, parsley, bell peppers, chives, zucchinis, sunflowers, corn, sweet basil, squash, cauliflower, lettuce okay now this is just a super quick selection of a tiny percentage of the seeds i've gotten from the dollar store so really the i can't afford to start gardening is a crock and you know it so i don't want to hear it in the comments below don't even go there because really what's it take a minute to beg borrow or find a dollar uh let's see up here minimum wage is about ten dollars an hour so ten dollars divided by 60 minutes it takes about six minutes to earn a dollar and get three or four packs of seeds. That is cheap, okay? That's, that's all there is to it, that's cheap. Really too, if you think about it, food is expensive, you know? So if you go buy seeds, let's say you get a pack of seeds with 100 carat seeds in it and you pay your whopping 33 cents for that or you find it four for a dollar, you pay 25 cents for that. You know, maybe only 25 of those carrots or 33 of those carrots actually become, you know, big standard carrots for you. You're still paying one cent each for those. You can't go to the grocery store and buy a carrot for a penny. And if you can, go shopping. Buy them, dehydrate them, save them, because that price will not last. Okay, next topic. Reason number two to start gardening right away that I just sort of touched on. It saves massive amounts of cash. The amount of money that we have saved trying to raise two teenage boys by gardening as compared to shopping has been able to pay for all of those other silly little things that go along with having kids, you know, like meat for the plate because we live in the city so we can't exactly have cattle running around. No domesticated livestock, you know, I'm not even allowed to have chickens here. But by having a garden growing, I'm saving a small fortune every week just with the vegetables. And you know, they're better quality vegetables too. And at the, a penny per, sure, have 10 carrots, I don't care, you know, maybe 10 carrots is a little much, you get sick, but you know, you look around the garden, you graze, oh, a leaf off of this, a pepper off of this, I'll take one of those. You know, it's gonna be even better once we have fruit trees and stuff going, but for now, it's pretty easy to take a walk around the yard, not pay a penny, and be pretty full by the time you've done a complete lap of the garden. So, yeah, the amount of cash saved is absolutely ridiculous. You know, when it comes to saving cash, if you're trying to garden in order to save cash, you know, obviously the best way to do that is to uh, either A, grow the most expensive fruit and vegetables you can find, or B, grow what you eat the most of. For example, if you watch most of my channel shows, you'll see peppers in almost everything. I eat a lot of peppers. I like them, they're expensive. And, and the variety that I have growing here, it, you simply can't get it in a grocery store. And if you did, it would cost an arm and a leg. And I'm not prepared to pay that much for food when I can pay pennies for a seed. Or, you know, worst case scenario, a dollar for a seed. And I can still get a whole year's worth of fruit out of it. It's 
the amount of cash you can save by gardening is absolutely massive. So, it's cheap and it saves cash. That's the first two reasons. Third reason. You know, the best reason, I think, to do almost anything with your cash is to use it as an investment. My grandfather was very fond of saying, make your money work for you, don't work for your money. And uh, he's very, very right, you know. Scrooge McDuck said it best, I think, too, with the work smarter, not harder. There are very few things that you can legally invest in where you can turn a penny into a dollar or a dollar into $20 or $20 into $50 a year for the rest of your life. But with gardening, you have that opportunity. You can spend $20 on an apple tree and maybe not that year harvest anything, but the year after that you'll be able to harvest apples, and the year after that, and the year after that, and the year after that, and the year after that. And how many pounds of apples does it really take to get that $20 back? Not many. And then once you've gotten that $20 back, isn't that pure profit? Isn't that all return on your investment of $20? We bought a $20 fig tree. You can bet your bottom line that is going to be a big solid return on my investment. 33 cents for a packet of corn. Can you even buy a cob of corn for 33 cents? No, but you can grow an entire field of it for 33 cents. Sell a cob of corn for what, a dollar each? Fresh, farm fresh, corn on the cob, one dollar each? People will line up to pay that. So, let's see, at an average of two cobs per, what are they called, stalks of corn? Let's see, you get one stalk from, we'll say, every two seeds? It's ridiculous how much money you can make or save by gardening. So it has got to be, I think, the most sound legal investment available to us today. Start gardening, okay? I mean, sure, this seems very cash-related, but in this day and age, let's face it, we're all broke. We're all working hard to keep what we've got, and it's not getting any easier. So if it's cheap, and it saves money, and it's a wicked solid investment, those should be three good enough reasons right there, but you know what? I've got five more for you, okay? So, what's your next reason to start gardening now that the aquaponic garden has stopped trickling? Food security. Food security. You can go out to the grocery store every day if you want, and you can get your food, but what happens if the grocery store closes? Or what happens if your money stops? You know, what do you do? It's It seems really, I don't know, paranoid and prepper-minded and all that stuff, but if you are a responsible individual, then you are taking care of your needs in the long term. The only way to take care of your needs in the long term is to provide for food security. The only way, in my opinion, to have real food security is to have the ability to grow it yourself. So if you can grow your own vegetables, you can definitely raise livestock, in my opinion. It doesn't make it a fact, just my opinion. But you know what? Those vegetables that you don't eat can feed the chickens, can feed the goats, can feed all the other things that are helping to create the eggs or the meat that you need. It's, it's the very, very heart of food security. If you want to be safe, if you want to ensure that you and your family are well fed, garden. It's as simple as that. What's the matter? Can't afford a penny per seed? You know, we've already been through the reasons up to this point that you could be saying, well, I can't, I can't, I can't. Well, yes, you can. Go out there, return a couple of bottles, go to the dollar store, get yourself some seeds, and start establishing your own sense of food security because nobody else is going to do it for you. It's that simple. If you don't take care of you, why should you expect anybody else to, right? Food security through gardening is the only way. You know, the next reason to start gardening, I think, here, and this will be our fifth reason, compares really well with food security, and that is basically food quality. The vibrancy, the flavor, the intensity, the vitamins and nutrients and minerals that you can get out of taking the time to develop your soil and build yourself a good quality garden it doesn't... The stuff at the grocery store is a joke by comparison. Like, I get strawberries from the grocery store. Well, I don't anymore because I grow aquaponic strawberries, but I used to get strawberries at the grocery store and I thought to myself, these are really bland. Whatever happened to flavor in foods? And then I started growing some in the, in the garden and started growing some in the aquaponics and I'm like, wow, I have fallen in love with strawberries again. The only catch is 
I can't buy them from the store because they feel like a waste of money when I spent a couple dollars on strawberry plants a few years ago and every spring and every fall they keep producing strawberries that are more flavorful than I can go out and buy. So again, that, that factors into the whole healthy food and food security. Now that I spent that money, I've got this food coming in constantly as long as I care for the plant. And it's really not hard to care for plants. You just need to know what they like. They're like people or animals or anything else. Once you know what they need, what they like, what they deserve, what they require, however you want to word it, you've got it made in the shade, you know? And there are lots of things that'll grow in the shade, but that's not what we're talking about right now. If you grow with healthy soil, you're going to have healthy food, you know? If you harvest your food fresh and minutes later it's on your plate and your kids are eating it and they're going, oh wow, these vegetables taste great, then you're going to get to know the same enjoyment that I get. And when my teenage boys now come home to visit, they're like, I just want some decent veggies. The people I live with don't cook decent veggies. So, you know, that healthy food and that food security. Growing it yourself is the only way that's going to happen. So I really want you to consider, you know, even if you stop the video here, I want you to stop and think about these first five points that I've made. Because by now, you should be trying to figure out what you're going to start gardening. And if not, I've got three more points for you. All right, this next point is a little bit on the global activist side. But you know what? We all need to consider that because we're all damaging the rock we live on. Reduced global footprint, even growing one head of lettuce, one simple head of lettuce can reduce the emissions produced to bring you your food considerably. And in this day and age, if you're not trying to solve the problem, you are the problem. I'm sorry to be so mean because it's just not the Canadian way and it's just not the way I was raised. But you know what? You're either part of the solution or you're part of the problem. Everyone everywhere who has anything going as a garden is, in my opinion, part of the solution. So get involved. Do something to help make this world a little bit better instead of just taking advantage of everything because we can do it this way, so why not be lazy? Well, I'll tell you why not be lazy, because it's destroying the planet. All of those pieces of big, huge farm equipment use massive amounts of fossil fuel, and that creates massive amounts of pollution, and that's making it harder for all of us to breathe, and that's creating more allergies for our children, and how much worse do you think it's going to be for our grandchildren? Because we're not doing anything about it. But you, by watching this video right now, and you, by deciding that you should start to garden, you are making a difference. You are making a better world for your children, for your grandchildren, for everyone who comes after us. And you know what? We have no right to destroy this planet. So we had better get our butts working on fixing it, right? So there you go. Gardening reduces the global footprint. If you want more than a rant on that, go check out the blog I did on this very topic. It's um, worded a little differently because I type different and I talk, right? I'm, I'm a human, same as everybody else. But anyway, yeah, check out the blog because I got more to say about that whole reduced global footprint, but I'm not going into it in a video rant. The next reason you should start gardening right now is because it takes practice. If you think that anyone has ever been born with the ability to grow every plant under the sun, you're wrong. It's just that simple. It takes practice. You have to learn how to grow peppers because they require something different from lettuce. You have to learn how to grow lettuce because it doesn't like certain temperatures. And you have to learn how to grow kale. Okay, you know what? Almost anybody can grow kale. Same with mint. There are lots of things that almost anybody can grow. But to grow them exceptionally well takes practice. I don't think I grow anything exceptionally well. This tomato plant here behind me, that's all the aquaponic garden. That's not me. That's, that's the the automated garden that I've got going behind me, powered by my fish. My fish have more credit in that tomato than I do, right? But it's about knowing the methods that work. It's about getting things out there that will work in, in my case, severe drought conditions. This place is a desert in the summertime. So I had to do something that would grow my plants, keep my kids fed, and not use a whole lot of water. So aquaponics is what it was. Um, but it takes, eat aquaponics takes practice, soil gardening takes practice, being a quiet dog down the street takes practice. Um, he's still working on it. But, but the thing I'm trying to say here is there is a learning curve, you know. When you start gardening, you're going to kill plants. So what? Whatever. You paid maybe a penny for the seed, even if you paid a dollar for the seed. Whoop! Okay? It's not that big of a deal. And 
really, 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 when you first start gardening, you should not be planting those expensive seeds. Start with the cheap stuff. That's why that was my first point in this video. Start with the cheap plants and start with just a few of them. There are lots of videos here on YouTube about you know, how to avoid common mistakes. I think uh, Grow Your Heirlooms put up a great video on uh, the 10 most common mistakes for gardening beginners and I strongly encourage you to check that out. I'm going to try and remember to put a link to that down in the doobly-doo. Um, he's a great guy and it's a very, very good informative video. If you're watching this video, you should watch that one next, okay? Just trust me on this. Really, really, the whole gardening takes practice, gardening takes time. No two gardens are going to be the same. My neighbor grows things differently than I do. The other neighbor grows things differently than I do. The neighbor across the alley grows things differently than I do because each and every square foot of this beautiful planet we reside on has a different type of soil, gets a different amount of sunlight, has different plants growing in it, has different pests harvesting from it. So in those first years, you're just going to be learning what your little tiny patch of land has to deal with. You know, so keeping your garden small, keeping it organized, keeping it cheap in those first few years while you're learning about the area is definitely a good way to go. You know, and like I said, a couple years, a few years, you might get lucky and you might find, wow, I grow just amazing tomatoes without even trying, in which case, awesome. Please put up a video with, you know, what you did to, to grow those awesome tomatoes because we're trying to grow the gardening community on a global scale here. That's, that's my goal. I want that to be your goal by the time, you know, you finish watching this video. Um, yeah, so really it takes time, right? And that brings us kind of to the last point. The last point I want to share with you is that good gardens, they take time, like I was saying. Soil... Sometimes you can get beautiful soil. You can dig up your backyard, you can flip the grass over, and you've just got abundant, rich soil but not most of the time. Most of the time you rip up your garden and you discover dirt. What's the difference between dirt and soil? Quality, you know? How much time has been spent with that dirt in the possession of a gardener who's doing something about it to make it soil? A lot of people say, oh, it's disrespectful to call it dirt. No, I don't think so at all. I think it's a starting point. You start with dirt, you fix, 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 and before you know it, you have the most amazing soil in your garden producing the plants that are just making you happy and proud, and it's beautiful, but it's going to take years, okay? I have been working 10 years to develop the soil here. I've been turning compost and just everything that is a natural product, all the fruits and veg that, you know, scraps from the kitchen, they end up in the compost. The compost gets turned twice a year, three times a year, depending on how fast it fills up. I take the soil off the bottom of that, I put it into my containers, I put it into my raised garden beds. And um, slowly but surely, the quality of the fruit and veg that I'm growing here has just has improved so much. Um, I can't even begin to say, you know, what a difference it's been just by adding those little bits of compost. And I haven't even started doing things like adding rock dust or adding iron to my soil gardens. It's just, it's, it's just starting with compost, building a natural, healthy food source for the plants. And that is all part of the process. It's all part of, you know, point number seven, that learning curve. So really, I think a lot of gardeners get discouraged because they try too much up front. And uh, that's a point that Grow Your Heirlooms makes is that a lot of gardeners just, they go crazy. They see all of this stuff and they want to do everything all at once, but the world doesn't work that way. And humans don't work that way. And we need to do things one step at a time, you know? Have a what about Bob moment as you go into your garden. Baby steps, baby steps into the garden. Maybe grow peas first if it's kind of cool and shady. Or maybe grow a, a leafy green first. Or grow a couple things that you really really enjoy so if it doesn't work you go okay well I see what I did wrong I'm gonna do this and next year it's gonna do even better and next year it's gonna do even better and as you continue to improve your garden and improve your gardening skills and improve your seed selection you are gonna have an amazing garden that people are gonna look at and go wow you're such a good gardener but you and I know the truth you started off with dirt you spent hardly anything on seeds and it just took a little time and patience. And you will be making a difference. You will be helping to make a better world and you will be helping to ensure that you are the healthiest you you can be. So, 
Thanks everybody for sitting through all of this and taking the time to see the video of my eight reasons why you should start gardening now. I want to say a big thank you to the viewer who recommended that I make this video. And uh, if this is your first time on the channel, please feel free to subscribe. There's a link down below. Like I said, you know, there's going to be a link to the Grow Your Heirlooms video about top 10 mistakes. And what else? Oh yes. Don't forget to try something new. All right, everybody, I am going to see you later. It is getting cooking hot in this greenhouse, and i got to turn my water back on. So have a fantastic day ahead, everybody. I will see you again. Bye.